uh, when we began the study uh, in 1976, we were based in Puget Sound, actually, uh, right across from Seattle and Bainbridge Island. And uh, we had a sighting system. We would respond to sightings in a boat and try and uh, find the whales that were sighted and photograph them. Uh, as I say, we're using the techniques that Dr. Mike Big had developed. Um, and we had started in Puget Sound. In 1976, I think we had a total of about 70 encounters. Almost all of them were with the resident fish eater type. Uh, two or three times a month they were down in Puget Sound, and the rest of the time they were pretty much up here in the San Juan's core area. Um, and we noticed that, that they followed runs of salmon. And we weren't too sure what species at the time, but now we know it's Chinook salmon. And we also know that uh, beginning in 1975 through about 1984, basically salmon fishing in, in the Pacific Northwest of North America was a free-for-all. It was like the commercial, the treaty Indian, the sport fisheries. They were catching one and a half to almost two million salmon per year that came through the Strait of Juan de Fuca to the Puget Sound and this area. Huge numbers, and they averaged 17 and a half pounds each. Um, but that, it, it was overfishing. They, they decimated, literally decimated the population of Chinook salmon. And uh, they stopped going into Puget Sound. Basically, we had been used to seeing them two or three times a month, and then by 1985, they were not going there, except in the autumn they'd go in for chum runs, because there were no Chinook left in Puget Sound. And now we're seeing pretty much the same thing here. We're looking at, uh, what, 2017? A very poor year for Chinook in the Salish Sea in general, but in, in the core area here where they used to feed almost daily. Um, we've seen them, what, twice, three times this year. It's, uh, they're not going to be here to see us. They're, they're here for salmon to eat. And the salmon are smaller, much less numerous. They're virtually all hatchery fish. In the 1980s, the Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife had a policy decision to develop sport fisheries, sell licenses, develop the sport fishery, and have factory fish from hatcheries to supply the fish for the fishery. And uh, it's a big business. It's lots of money. There aren't as many fish, but uh, and they aren't as big, but that's, you know, it's a people-oriented thing. They didn't, nobody ever thought about the whales. We began to raise our voice a little bit, but at the time, the killer whales, or the fish-eating uh, southern residents that we were studying, uh, had just gone through a couple of decades of... Uh, gunfire and shooting because fishermen were they were trying to get rid of the competition. They all carried lead bullets in their bodies and very rarely did they get killed because they're such big tough animals. But we didn't want to raise the salmon issue in the 80s when salmon were already going down uh, and have more whales get shot. But uh, I think it's safe to raise it now. Everybody loves the whales. And uh, we know they eat salmon. And so let's solve the salmon problem.